Hello, Sugar Beet Growers. Rob Gerstenberger here for Beta Seed. Hey, today I want to talk about uh, Beta Seed hybrids for 2021 and some of the hybrids and how they performed this last year. So the 2021 performance and the 2022 varieties we have available. First, let's recap a little bit about the spring. Um, what a spring we had operating under the pandemic and all the uncertainty. Um, we got an early start this spring. We had freezing temperatures and, and so there was a lot of uncertainty whether the crop was going to emerge. And then it was extremely dry in a lot of areas and the crop came up really slow. This is a picture of some seedlings and what we were looking at towards the end of April this year. And uh, there was a lot of uncertainty with these seedlings. We didn't know whether they were going to make it. And in some cases, we ended up replanting. And this year was the second largest replant year that um, I've ever experienced uh, with beta seed since I've been a sales manager here in Michigan. So in the end, it was uh, really successful. We had the highest tonnage ever. Who would have ever dreamed we would see 37 ton average or 37.4. 50 ton fields were not uncommon. I mean, there was a lot of them this year. And so congratulations to you guys. You endured a lot, a wet fall, but um, we were successful getting the crop up and going and um, you were successful getting this crop harvested. And uh, so congratulations again. So I'm gonna talk about uh, the varieties we have available for this next year and some of the things that you need to consider um, before making your variety choices. So the first thing is, do I need nematode or non-nematode? Now we have another choice that you have to make. Um, we have CR Plus varieties available too, and um, they worked really well this year. Um, um, we had two guys or lots of different guys that grew them this past year and, and I heard many, many good comments. Beta Seed 1941, um, we had two fellas here that were kind of ambassadors for us on social media. They did a lot of posting and so I put their um, photos up here, Seth Brillett and Clark Gearstacker and both of them were very impressed with the performance of the Beta Seed 1941. I'm going to talk about all the varieties we have approved for 22. I have performance information in here from the OVTs, sugar beet advancement trials, and some other field trials um, I'm going to show you too. So let's just jump right in and look at the varieties we have approved for um, 2022. And we have 1703 approved. It meets, meets full approval. We have Beta Seed 197N. Um, it meets uh, full approval. We have 1606 approved again. It's an specialty approved nematode variety. Um, then we have two CR Plus varieties uh, that have a special approval, um, 1941 and 1065. I'm gonna talk a minute about the first year entries. We have two CR Plus varieties that are on approval track because the second generation now is making it for RST. So that's really important um, um, that we have um, higher sugar in our variety. So here is the official variety trial information from Michigan Sugar, um, average of eight locations. And I highlighted all the beta seed varieties in green um, that I just spoke about here. And you'll see that they're all relatively good performers in, um, in the trials, um, all in the upper half of the trials. So just uh, you got a lot of good selection coming uh, this next year with our beta seed varieties. Um, 1703, it's kind of been a workhorse variety. Uh, it really had good Sacospor tolerance and, and it has good Sacospor tolerance and, and it comes with a pretty well balanced package, um, high for uh, rhizomania, more of a moderate uh, Aphenomyces variety, has moderate Fusarium tolerance, very good on root aphid, Sacospor and uh, Rhizoctonia. So never see much uh, Rhizoctonia root rot in this variety has pretty good sugar and it's a high tonnage variety so it's it's really a well balanced uh, variety and it's um, um, it gives you Sacospor protection 
that a lot of the varieties in the past didn't have. So it was around a 75 to 80 percent of the checks for uh, Sacospora, which is really pretty good when you get under a hundred percent of the checks. Um, you get uh, some really good Sacospora tolerance coming in the varieties. Um, this is the Sugar Beet Advancement average of six trial locations um, from Chaffin, DVL Farms, Kern Farms in Ontario, um, Kretschmere Brothers in Caseville, Sylvester Farms and Wadsworth Farms. And um, you'll see 1703 was the fifth out of 12 varieties as far as uh, revenue per acre. So it really did a good job, a really good job for um, growers. And um, it's a, a good full season variety. Had good tonnage here, 42.8 um, ton and 17.1% um, sugar. Um, the average of this, all these varieties um, was, was 17, so it was just above on, on sugar for an average. So just a really good, well-balanced variety. Take a really close look at 1703 this next year. I, I think you'll find it, it'll fit on a lot of your acres. Nematode growers, um, you know, you're, you've probably used 1606 in the past. It has uh, got really high rhizomania tolerance, some um, high AF, fusarium, and uh, root aphid tolerance. Um, it's a moderate Sacospora variety. It doesn't have the best Sacospora tolerance, but it's, um, it's a, as good uh, Sacospora tolerance as we have in the nematode varieties right now. So. It's a really good variety. It had an exceptional year in grower fields and in the six trial average, um, it had a great year. It's a high tonnage variety um, with good sugar. So it actually topped the sugar beet advancement trial average of six locations, um, as you can see here. So another good choice for you um, if you need a nematode variety. This has been a really good performer. Guys always comment about the root rot tolerance that this variety has, so they really like that. Um, 197N2 is another nematode variety. So the, it was limited last year. It's now on full approval, and um, it's a real high yielding variety too. Um, it has good rhizomania tolerance, very high Ephenomyces fusarium, and root aphid tolerance, again, similar to 1606. Um, it's a moderate Sacospora tolerant variety, good nematode tolerance, Rhizoctonia tolerance is excellent, has higher sugar, has a little better sugar than 1606, and it's a high tonnage variety. So another good variety and it pays uh, really similar to 1606. Um, this is the Michigan Sugar um, 2020 data and the 2021 data combined and you'll see I, I circled uh, the revenue per acre for uh, um, 1606 and 197N. Um, they're very close to being the same. So both these varieties would work well for you in your nematode fields. You, you will have to have a full season spray program um, for fungicide with both of these varieties because um, they're not as good as these CR plus varieties or 1703 for Sarcosper tolerance. Tons per acre beta seed just shines as you'll see or tons per acre. We also now have some of the best uh, Sacospora tolerant varieties. If you take a look there at uh, 1065 and 1941, um, 1065 is 49% of the checks. 1941 is 41% of the checks. And I said, you know, boy, if we get it, when you get under 100, you were doing good in the past. So um, these two varieties are just outstanding for Sacospora tolerance. Um, Great fusarium and uh, rhizomania tolerance in those two varieties. Good Ephenomyces tolerance, especially in 1941. Actually, it's a good plus. So they all come with uh, adequate root aphid tolerance too. And, uh, and they yielded really well this year. And I'm gonna get into showing you some of that here in just a second. So um, take a close look at the, Michi or at the beta seed uh, varieties.
let's talk a little more about uh, CR Plus before I move into some of the performance data on 1941, but uh, in 1065. Um, CR Plus is a KWS trait um, developed that we're now, our breeders are now putting into um, all our um, varieties. It's, um, um, they're developing new varieties. We expect to see a nematode variety this next year with the KWS CR Plus trait. So we, we that will be entered hopefully in the OVTs this next year. So that's going to be something uh, really interesting to watch and see develop. If we can get the nematode varieties down into that 50% uh, of the checks that we're where we're at now, I mean, your spray load is going to just really decrease through the summer then and um, we should be lowering inoculum and everything else uh, in our field. So um, 1941, um, here's some performance data from um, the Chris Guza farm. Sugar Beet Advancement did three CR Plus trials. This was the best of all the CR Plus trials this year. Um, the other two had some adverse um, weather one was not even harvested and the other one at uh, Herabos over in Gratiot County they they had about 10 inches of rain in a week's time and so it there was really no difference if you look at that one and I didn't include it but uh, in uh, any of the varieties but so the varieties in the CR plus trials well 1941 was entered um, 1065 and in a couple crystal varieties um, 675 was the standard variety to compare against and so what Daniel and I know he's explained this and I hope you've watched his presentation too but there was um, a three spray program and that was kind of our recommendation for CR plus varieties and there was a six spray program and Daniel calculated the revenue and you'll see that in these trials the three spray program actually netted more and so in this trial they're ranked by um, net revenue per acre and you'll see 1941 um, was the best performer in the trial it had 18.2 sugar and um, it was 43.7 tons and um, it had very high tons for many growers this year. I didn't include the Kearns trial um, in any of my slides today because you've seen it if you watch Daniel's presentation but alongside the Kern trial in Ontario they planted uh, on either side of um, strips of 1941 and Daniel told me that they averaged 55 ton the two strips and would have been the best in the trial if it would have been included but they limit the sugar beet advancement trials to 12 varieties and in um, 1941 wasn't chosen to be in the trial because it was a specialty variety but long story short it's going to make a great choice for um, Ontario growers with limited fungicides um, it's uh, bringing high yield and, and you should get great sugar too because you're going to control Sacospora better throughout the year. 1065, again, it's a similar story to 1941 and, and I, I leave the Guza trial in here because um, it was in, in the Guza trial. It was also in the standard sugar beet advancement trials and um, you've seen that already that it, it placed very high in those trials and it's placed high in uh, this trial and so um, 1065 and um, 1941 are pretty similar varieties 1065 might have a tick better in sugar than uh, 1941 1941 slightly better on Sacospora than 1065 so in and you'll see that those numbers are in the Michigan Sugar two-year data where they have the disease ratings in there. So take a look at that. 1941 was 41% of the checks and um, 1065 around 50. Um, why do you want to grow CR Plus varieties? Well, I mean, some, uh, some things to think of is it's just peace of mind. Um, it's an additional tool 
that will help you control Sacaspa all season long. Um, you got management convenience, uh, fields that are farther away from the shop yeah, are uh, kind of a pain to go and uh, spray all the time, right? I mean, you got a lot of road time, so you can minimize uh, your trips over to those farms. Gives you flexibility late season. I mean, with pre-harvest uh, intervals and spraying and, and uh, gives you protection, you know. Um, going into the fall when it's time to harvest dry beans or something else, uh, you know, it's you can put the sprayer away um, with these CR Plus varieties. Um, they bring high, high yield and stability. Going into the fall, if um, there's uh, Sacaspa pressure, it's going to maintain your sugar and and continue to to um, give you tons moving into harvest because you got you still have your canopy. Um, converting sunlight to sugar so and you can save money on fungicides another big reason just roughly if it's $25 an acre for your um, fungicide uh, materials um, you're saving $42 a unit every time you don't have to spray so um, that adds up too so you got enhanced suppression and and that's gonna you know lower inoculum levels as we move forward in the future and just better for um, the environment, um, save our fungicides. They'll become, you know, the, it'll help keep our fungicides viable in the future. So just a few reasons. I'm, I'm sure you can even think of more why you should be growing CR Plus um, varieties. Are they growing CR Plus varieties in other places? Yes. Um, Michigan, we had them last year. Um, Mindac Farmers Co-op had them and. They, had, they probably had the most in the country. Um, they were about 55% of their crop. Southern Minnesota beet, sugar beet co-op growers had them because they have a lot of Sacaspa pressure, similar to ours. American Crystal this year, they, they won. And they're, we have our first generation available for the American Crystal um, beet growers this year. Western Sugar South are have them available and are interested in, in them this year too. So. History is important um, to look back and, you know, instead of looking at just one year data, we, we have uh, official trial data where they've been in a couple years. So you've got that to look at. And we had this trial out last year um, where we compared um, 1941 and 1703. The tonnage was very similar, 49 tons 49 and a half for 1941 and we achieved um, 19 sugar with 1941 last year in 2020 and we had 19.5 sugar with 1703 so um, you know 1941 can um, perform it's a full season variety um, it'll take you right to the end of harvest and give you great yields and great sugar First year varieties come and I mentioned them briefly, but um, the important thing I want to show here is they're on approval track for RST. So we have 1122. You can look it up in uh, Michigan Sugar um, data book. And then we, um, it was 48.13% of the checks. So um, really good on Sacaspra. And it was also high yielding in uh, official trials too. So that's pretty exciting. Um, we have another one, um, BT Beta Seed 1183, again on approval track for RST. So CR Plus varieties coming with great RST. So that's uh, what we're looking for. Um, um, and there, we expect to just see them getting better and better. And we really look forward to that CR Plus nematode variety. Um, Thank you for the business you've gave us over the years and last year and um, and we we want your business again this year. Um, we have a lot of great offerings for you and varieties, um, great performance. Um, so give our salesmen a call. They they're all geared up right now, um, ready to um, talk and on the phone or meet in person. Um, so this is a list of the sales agents. Um, we didn't have any changes this year and um, my number's on here too. And so it's uh, jot it down and give me a call. And um, all, I wanna wish all the best to you and your families. Um, 
for this holiday season. And uh, most of all, I, I, and I wish that, and I pray that everybody stays healthy and, um, cause that's most important. So, uh, all the best. I have, uh, a quick video for you and, um, it's two minutes long and, uh, hang in there and, um, and I, um, uh, hope to see you soon. Have you heard about KWS's CR Plus trait? Well, I want to tell you a little bit about the KWS CR Plus trait. We've incorporated the, C, the CR Plus trait in two beta seed hybrids this past season. And I'm in a field of beta seed 1941. And it is a, a CR Plus hybrid where the grower has sprayed the crop four times. We recommended a three spray program and in general a three spray program has worked excellent but you'll see from looking at these canopies in this field there's no sacospor showing and there's been a lot of sacospor pressure this fall. So uh, this grower has been extremely happy with the CR Plus and, and it's allowed him to plant the CR Plus at, in fields that are farther away from his shop. He's been able to reduce his uh, fungicide application, save money on fungicide. Plus, it's gave him a lot of extra time. So I don't know how many days it takes you to spray your crop, but if you can reduce from six sprays down to three, um, that's a lot of time that you have to do other things. So um, we really look forward to uh, um, talking about our CR Plus varieties with you this fall. Uh, we have a lot of new stuff, uh, new hybrids entered in uh, official variety trials and I expect to see some really exciting results. So give our salesman a call and let's talk about CR Plus and save you a lot of time this uh, next year. Beta Seed, breeding confidence.